thought I'd uh, record some of my experiences with the Stubblefield cell, just to help anyone out who's working on that. Uh, basically, you need uh, two dissimilar metals. The main operation of the cell is on uh, galvanic action, and then some type of electrolyte, and then something to separate the materials. I'm going to show you what I've built some out of. Uh, I've got a galvanized threaded bolt right here. Some uh, copper wire. This is 18 gauge. And then some gauze. And then, then obviously some water. I also use some of this uh, tape that uh, water will get through there. Basically what you do is you take your galvanized bolt and you wrap some gauze around it. A couple of turns. And then on that, you'll take and wrap the wire around. Now, the reason why I use the threaded bolt is that you'll find the, the wire follows nicely along the threads. And, and you don't have any shorting out between uh, different coils of your copper wire. The gauze is there to make sure there's no shorting out between the uh, galvanized bolt and the, the copper wire. So basically, uh, your bolt is going to be one of your terminals, and then the wire is going to be the other terminal. After you've uh, wrapped it all around there, I like to leave a little bit exposed on the top. Then you can tape it off with the uh, permeable tape. And you end up with something that looks like this. Here I've uh, soldered six of them together. So you have six individual stubble field cells, and you put them together in, in one battery there. Now, out of this material, I've gotten about uh, 0.7 volts per cell. I don't know how much the amperage is. I haven't measured that out. Um, obviously, if you add them up in series here, then you know, you'll increase the voltage. This uh, particular battery when wet gets about four and a half volts and you see again what i've done there is i've taken that wire that i've left the copper wire and wrapped it around each progressive bolt head and if you take these and add them in parallel then you'll increase your amperage now the patent talks about the, a self-generating effect from this cell and some people have guessed that that was coming from earth currents. I got this off my desk with different pulses of, of voltage. The amazing thing is, out of this unit, I had uh, one pulse of 210 volts. Um, didn't stick around for long. I had other pulses around uh, 50 volts and uh, 30 volts, 10 volts. I had a, a, a 20 volt or a 30 volt uh, pulse that lasted for about 10 seconds. Uh, nothing official, just when I noticed it, I started counting off 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, just to get get a rough benchmark of how long it was lasting. And again, that lasted for about 10 seconds. Um, I thought this was from some type of inductive effect, but uh, I also built these using uh, strips of tape, so copper tape and, and aluminum tape. And, and I was getting the same type of uh, voltage bursts from, from those cells. Um, I'm guessing it has something to do with some kind of a polarization effect in the water. But you got to admit, that's amazing. 210 volts off, off this little unit. Um, just a, a few pointers to wrap up. Again, uh, you want to use the exposed copper wire. All right. And... Uh, the reason for that is it has to be in contact with the water. Um, and then the water has to be in contact with your other metal too, so you get that uh, galvanic action. And uh, your individual cells have to be uh, isolated from one another. I, I tried, you know, on one bolt and just different coils, and I, I couldn't get that increase in voltage that, that I had hoped for. And what I'd like to see is if... Uh, First of all, someone could see where that extra voltage is coming from. If you can repeat it, I repeated it. I, I just can't repeat it on demand. Uh, the, the, the effect continues to happen. It, it just happens sporadically. So I, I would love to see if someone could uh, 
discover for us how that happens. And then I'd like to see if someone could find out what kind of amperage we can draw from these just to measure it out. And interesting thing would be to see how many of these you could gang up and uh, connect them then to maybe off the shelf uh, inverter, uh, giving you a DC to AC. How much could you power from that? That's all I got. Hope it helps.